are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth on it. But let every man take heed how he buildeth upon it. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, that every man's work, or, or every man's work, shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built upon it, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Um, we, we know, we've been taught, and I don't know how much we fully understand it, but we've been taught that Jesus is the focus of Scripture. He, he, is, he is what we concentrate on, and, and as we study Scripture, it, we talk about the foundation. He is the foundation. Uh, um, he is the, the thing we focus on. And I, here's the way I want to illustrate it. We have, I, I, I recently, about three months ago, purchased a couple of solar panels, which I have returned because I, I didn't, didn't even open them. Mm -hmm. But with that, there came some connectors. Mm -hmm. that, that connector served as a, as a, as a uh, I'll call it the focus point, the focal point. And, and I had two panels, but this thing, you could hook up to eight different panels in it. Uh, you have solar panels, they're connected by cord, and, and you can do, as I said, up to eight of them, on you know, all the way around it. The, the power, they, these are collectors, they collect power from the sun. Okay. And they, they bring it in to this controller, which goes out to another box uh, uh, that uh, connects the batteries because the, the energy is stored in batteries, okay? okay? Now, I'm, I'm trying to do a spiritual application here. If you think of this connector as, as Jesus, let me just put his name there. Okay, that, that, that's Jesus. The power, all these, what I call peripheral issues, things that we, we look at in Scripture, and we don't often understand how they fit into Christ. But if you make Jesus your focal point in Scripture, when you read the Bible, say, how does that, how does that tie into the person of Jesus? Mm -hmm. what, how, what, what is the connector there? It, it, the connector, I mean, everything must connect. All these issues that we address in Scripture, call them solar panels, call them whatever, collectors, uh, whatever you want to call them, we don't often understand what this means out here, what the scripture's talking about, or what this one's talking about. Mm -hmm. But once you, you, you bring Jesus into your focus, and everywhere you read, I mean, there are, there are scriptures in there that don't directly address him, but the issues that they address tie into Jesus somehow. Jesus is the thread that ties Genesis to Revelation. Yes. From the beginning of the book to the end of the book, you find Jesus if you know what you're looking for. Yes. And if you don't know what this is, how it ties into him, just continue to focus on him and do it prayerfully, of course. Studying, reading throughout the scripture, and trying to find out, well, how does that fit into Jesus? And, and if it fits into him, how does it apply to me? How, what do, why, how do I address this issue? And the more you, you focus on him, and, the, and you continue to read all these other things that pertain to him, the more into focus these become. Before you know it, these things will be in here. These, these panels won't be out here on the roof of your building. These issues pertaining to Christ, they will come more into that focus. As you because the, the understanding of what you're reading becomes more clear. You have more clarity on what the scripture is saying about this person here. Jesus must be the focus of everything that we do 
in our walk with, with God. Because he is God. Yes. He is the truth. He's the central figure in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. You can find him throughout. There are, there are patterns in there. You, you take those patterns and apply them to your life, you, you'll find Jesus. Even Jesus' own baptism. Why was he baptized? Acts 2.38 says baptism is for the remission of sin. Jesus never sinned. So, so why was he baptized? Well, he had a pattern. He kept his pattern. Because he, he keeps his own laws. He never breaks his own laws. And uh, so he kept that pattern in baptism. That's the only reason. Some say it was an example for us. Well, yeah, it was, but but more specifically, it was his pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And he was saying, this is what you must do. And uh, so we, we emulate what he does, and of course the scriptures teach it, before the remission of sin. So the more we focus on Jesus, the foundation, the more these things come into focus and the better understanding we have, because we have placed them in their proper perspective. They become part and parcel in your, they are already, but in your thinking they become part and parcel of who Christ is and what his purpose is for us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 11, are we ready? Yes, sir. I'm not, I've got to find it. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. But the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the manner, same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death to it till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man so examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let, let's take a moment. I, I, I skipped over this part the last time I did it and, and I apologized for it. But let's take a moment. Think about our relationship with the Lord. If there's any offense between us and God, you're going to know if you've offended Him. Um, make that clear. Get that cleared up between you and Him. Get the forgiveness. And then we can, we can take the Lord's Supper without the condemnation that goes along with uh, taking it when we have uh, offended Him and haven't cleared it up. So let's take about... 20 seconds. God can do it just like that. Think about it for about 20-30 seconds. And then take it, uh, the meal at your own pace. 